thing we do with surface water is we make demon water. So after the surface water pumps on the way to making demon water, where do we go? Mix bed is the last step. Oh, oh. Soft drinks. Soft drinks. What does a softener do? Takes the metal gel of the water. Yes. So it removes the hardness, and the hardness is dissolved metals. Science. Science. So we've got things like magnesium and calcium. Iron ions, and we're taking those out, and that we are replacing them with sodium. So we got five micron cartridge filters. And only one of them is in service. And chemistry modern and the DP on them. And then where do we go? Cars. Cars. Yeah. You go way ahead of yourself, bud. Somebody said RO pumps? Yeah. RO pumps is the correct answer. And we also. Yes. Is that the outlet side? Offset the uh, sodium or what? The, the Stop. Josh! <laughs> Mark? No. Lance? Uh, you won't be able to get hypo. You can't find it. Bisulfite kills the hypo. So bisulfite bonds together with hypochloride and makes it inert. So it quits interacting with things. Alright, so the hypo will mess up the filter. The RO membranes, uh, they wear out faster when they're exposed to hypo. They, they get brittle. I use quotes a lot when I'm talking about things I don't really understand that I'm taking other people's words for it. All right. Uh, that same tap, there, the chemist will once a day disconnect the line from the bi uh, bisulfite and hook up what's called a biocide. Bio meaning life. So it does the same thing as the hypo. It kills the growies. Because if you don't do something to kill the growies, then you get biological fouling on your membranes. And it doesn't matter that you protect it from hypo, you lost them to algae. For this reason, the chemists like to turn off the ROs at night so that they know that in the morning they'll have room in the demon tank to run them so that they can hook up their biocide and run it for an hour before they go back to their normal bisulfite process. All right. So we go from the RO pump to the RO membrane. RO stands for reverse osmosis. What is osmosis? Nobody? Nobody got nothing for me? I know what it is. I just can't think of 
right there. I go watch those Mosa Jones and it's got to be soon. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you have a, a membrane, and usually you learn this in like a ninth grade biology class when they're talking about cells. And the membrane will let water through, and it, but it won't let anything else through. And that way, your uh, that way the cell can absorb water without giving up everything that's inside. And so the natural tendency is for uh, the water to flow in and dilute out the other side that has the con contaminants, has stuff in it. That's that's osmosis. Reverse osmosis is pushing the other way through the membrane. So you're trying to push across the membrane and keep the dirt on one side and get the clean stuff out on the other. So we have uh, a first pass and a second pass. So you go in. It looks like a long cylinder, right? But what you actually have in there is the membrane is like a sheet that is spiral wound. And so there is an one side of the sheet and the other side of the sheet. And then all those come together in a header where all the clean side are on one side and all the dirty side are on the other. And on the outside edge, there's a tap where the stuff that was not clean gets pushed through. And then we say, well, let's try again. And we stick it through another set. And the stuff that comes out there, this stuff goes to a drain. And then the clean stuff comes together. And then we go to a second pass. I need a bigger whiteboard. We're going to learn to draw small. So there is another RO pump on the skid. And it goes, the clean stuff comes out, and the dirty. And the dirty stuff comes and makes a second pass. And that clean stuff comes out, and that's the stuff that is good enough. And the dirty stuff here is still cleaner than the stuff over here, no, hold on. still cleaner than the stuff we were getting from the uh, softeners. So it goes back and makes another pass. And then this clean stuff goes to the permeate tank. Permeate is what went through the semi-permeable membrane. And then we got pumps coming off of it. And then we got mixed beds. And then coming out of the mixed beds, we go to the demon tank. And even though you can't tell, this demon tank is the same size as one of those service water tanks. I know my drawing makes it look small. All right. Mixed beds. How do they work? What do they do? Yes, they're the same. Kind of like the polishers. They look just like the polishers. Anything to add besides I mean, that? They're working like the polishers. They're taking away something. They're adding something to it. Right. Yes. Ion exchange. Ion exchange. So we are taking out sodium and chloride, and we are putting in hydronium and hydroxide. And the fancy part here is that the H plus for the hydronium and the OH negative for the hydroxide, those come together and they make H2O. 
So the stuff that you're putting in is becoming water. Pure water. So when we do a regen, we're getting the H plus from acid, sulfuric acid, and we're getting the OH from the caustic. So the same way, we had three levels here that let you run longer without. We kind of didn't need any of this. We could have just gone straight to a mix bed. But you wouldn't get any kind of life out of it. You'd be regener regenerating them all the time. And these things run for like a million gallons of throughput. At 150 gallons a minute, they last a good long time. I said 150 gallons a minute. That's what they're rated for. That's not what we actually run them at. Uh, I, I want to say 135 or something. Yeah, 100. Yeah. And that limit is based on the RO membrane not liking cold water. So when the service water tank gets down like 35 gallons a minute, they really can't do the 150 gallons a minute that they're rated for and promised. And so rather than try to remember to tweak with it all the time, they said, eh, 135 is good enough. Is the regen on those as complicated as the regen on the softener? No. Is fair? Yeah, it, so it's all done within the one vessel. Yeah, okay. So no, it's not as complicated because of that. But there is something similar where you have you have two different kinds of beads. You got the H plus beads and the OH negative beads. Cation and anion beads, yeah. right? Yeah, same. You got same spread and you got pop. Yeah. So, you, so then when you you backwash it and then you fluff it, and when you fluff it, then the heavier beads want to end up on the bottom and the lighter beads want to end up on the top, and that's how you end up separating it. And then we put the sulfuric acid on the heavier beads, and we put the caustic on the lighter beads. I'm only 90% sure that's true, that might be backwards. But the point is, the chemicals, one chemical is heavier than the other, and they designed it so the beads that go with that chemical is heavier than the other. So that this can all be done inside one vessel where it floats on top. The acid and the caustic, they, can't, they interact, but they don't get stirred up. It's like uh, oil and vinegar. I've seen Clifford do it. That's why. Yeah, I mean. So, with 90% of the stuff out here, all you're doing is hitting start throughout. So, uh, and with our polisher region, I mean, it's, it's more complicated, but you hit start and you leave it alone for at 18 hours. And then you come back and you have like 10 steps you actually monitor that takes, you know, two hours. And then. It's in auto for another 10 hours after that while it's rinsing it. You got two critical steps on polishing, basically. Separation, no flavor, and chemical injection. And the rest of it, it does not. Well. There's another place we use acid. We use acid for regen, and we use acid in the ROs. I think it's between the two skids. Yeah. Between the first and second pass. So you, well, actually, you use caustic. Am I backwards? Yeah. Alright, caustic. So caustic raises the pH. And there's something about this reverse osmosis process that makes the pH go down. And I don't understand it. I've, I've asked the question in class with people that gave confident answers, but I did not understand what it was well enough to. So it, it's one of these things I'm going to put in quotes. Something in the process causes pH to go down, 
and we want to bring the pH back up so we add phosphorus. Questions? And same.